Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And many people have been emailing me recently asking why is Band 71 so important for T-Mobile? So I wanted to make a video on it. So this article came from Alex Wagner over at T-Mobile News. This is an older article, but it says new report details T-Mobile's network improvements with extra 600 megahertz spectrum. Now, this is, of course, an additional improvement on Band 71 that came now. But early on, Band 71 was very important for T-Mobile because it gave them access to nationwide spectrum. Not necessarily that, that it was already rolled out. Of course, that takes investment and building, but it gave them areas where they had no spectrum with band 12 because they didn't own it in that area. But now with band 71, it gave them access to spectrum that they didn't have prior in some areas. So as they started building out the network there, they get they gained native coverage. And now people that didn't have a band 71 device, they couldn't latch onto the coverage in that area because their phone didn't support it. So that's one of the very big reasons why Band 71 is so important for a T-Mobile customer because T-Mobile is now gaining coverage at a very quick pace on Spectrum that is not largely deployed in terms of mobile devices on T-Mobile's customer base. A lot of customers still have Band 12 devices, which is great, and it's still Band 12 still covers a large amount of the U.S., but in... In, in cases on rural expansion, expansion on, on uh, smaller highways, Band 71 has become the coverage band in those areas. And it's become very important to T-Mobile. And in the same return, it's also becoming very important to the T-Mobile customers because it's the layer that's giving those customers in that area the additional coverage that is needed. So that's one of the reasons why Band 71 is so important. The other reason why it's so important, as T-Mobile is doing the Band 71 layovers in areas where they already had coverage of Band 12, now we're talking higher bandwidth. We're going from 5 megahertz to 10, 15, and in some areas, 20 megahertz, which is going to allow for a better streaming, streaming experience using 600 megahertz. That's another big reason why Band 71 is so important. For now, for a very long time, T-Mobile has been advertising, building out Band 12. And over time, more and more devices got Band 12 on board. So now there are a lot of T-Mobile customers that have naturally upgraded into a Band 12 device, which now means that that spectrum is a bit congested. At 5 megahertz, that allows for roughly, I want to say around 37.5 megabits per second on total max speeds now of course there's there's some other few tweaks that can be made here and there on low band four by two and such but that's about roughly about the max once you get outside of the coverage that band two and band four can provide because band 12 can reach a lot further so now when you go on band 12 only coverage the bandwidth in a lot of cases is not necessarily sufficient enough to carry uh lots amount of people band 71 on the other hand now that it's being added to the network of course for 5g reasons but also for the reason that the bandwidth that it has can hold more people even at an additional five megahertz so let's say band 71 is in that area that you're traveling to and it's at 10 megahertz so now you have 37.5 plus 37.5 you add that together now you have that additional max speed of 37.5 to, to hold more customers. So on band 71, T-Mobile is able to squeeze out much better performance over band 12. Now, in many cases in the real world scenario, you're not going to hit the max theoretical speed because there are users on the network. But if you can manage to do 5, 10, 15 megabits per second at the edge of the cell site because of the additional spectrum, that's a win in, in T-Mobile's book. That should be a win because that means the customer can get a reasonable experience on streaming, calling, sending out a text in that new coverage area. So that's another big reason why Band 71 is so important for T-Mobile 
and now the customer and why it's important, in my opinion, to upgrade to a Band 71 device. Now, of course, I'm not telling you you have to. I'm not sponsored by T-Mobile or anything like that. I'm just letting you know if you are a curious T-Mobile customer as to why they continue to keep talking and advertising that Band 71, these are the reasons why. Now, of course, Band 71 is not the end-all be-all. It does not fix everything. But as T-Mobile continues building out new sites, added coverage, and they do the layovers on Band 71, the network is going to get just that much better in the, uh, in the long term. So just keep all of that in mind. And of course, the next reason why Band 71 was so important for T-Mobile, it was their introduction on nationwide 5G. Now, a lot of, a lot of people misinterpreted that, misunderstood it. The introduction into the nationwide 5G was not necessarily that it was nationwide and, it, you know, that it covered every single inch of the United States, but it was nationwide from a perspective that the 5G and R that T-Mobile presented actually had coverage to it. Um, a buddy of mine, I'm sure some of you have seen his channel, Tech Extremist, said that he traveled from Phoenix to Tucson and he was connected to T-Mobile's 5G the entire way. That is a big win. That is something that millimeter wave just can't match at this point in time. Of course, Verizon is using DSS to challenge that. And you've all seen AT&T use their um, low band 5G to uh, their band 5, low band 5G to also show that they have a coverage layer on 5G. Now, the only negative on that 5G that T-Mobile is presenting to, to the public is it does not perform a huge generational leap. You'll still get similar, very similar speeds on LTE that you will see on that 5G uh, and our layer of band 71. That's just right now, that's just uh, what it is. There's, there's nothing to it, nothing special about it. Band 71 just does not have enough bandwidth to perform any better than what we're seeing today. There aren't any 50, 100, 200 megahertz layers of band 71 to go around. The most right now we're seeing is 20. That's where it's maxing out at. And as you see with this article, I will leave it in the description down below. You will see that they are getting additional spectrum from Dish and um, Comcast and some of the some of the bigger companies. So they are able to uh, dedicate 20 megahertz now to 5G and R and 20 megahertz to LTE. But that is... Uh, for most is going to be on a temporary basis. They are working. If you haven't seen that video, they are working on a payment plan to further extend that lease. So they're they're looking to pay the company for an extended amount of time of one company they closed with for three years that they would get to keep that spectrum. So in the future, we may see them sign a similar um, lease with Comcast or Dish to keep their spectrum for additional time. So you as a T-Mobile customer can make use of that additional capacity for extended amount of time, uh, whatever that lease agreement will be. We'll find out, maybe they don't. And after the 60 days, they give it back, who knows? But one company they've already struck that deal with. So whichever areas are covered by that company with Band 71, T-Mobile is going to continue uh, utilizing that spectrum. So those were some of the reasons uh, why that Band 71 is so very important for the T-Mobile customer. As T-Mobile is ramping up now with the Sprint merger being closed, the integration of networks, um, this is going to allow them to, of course, spend a bit more on the wireless CapEx. What we've been quoted so far is that they're going to spend roughly around $30 billion the first three years. That's what we've, what we've seen so far. But again, that could go up. Just depends on how everything is going in terms of permit approvals and such like that. So they could definitely spend more than what they originally anticipated. But I think a big, a big thing about the Band 71 is that T-Mobile bought it nationwide where they didn't have spectrum, that low band spectrum prior. And it's going to allow them to penetrate a lot more rural markets that they didn't have coverage in prior, which, of course, is going to bring more fierce competition to AT&T and Verizon that were considered the monopoly to begin with because T-Mobile wasn't able to compete in a lot of the markets that Verizon and AT&T have service in. 
So again, let me know what you think about all this in the comment section down below. Just wanted to make this video. A lot of you have emailed me, sent me DMs asking. So I got more videos coming, don't worry. But I wanted to make this one because I think a lot of people really are misunderstanding what Band 71 really means to the company and what it should mean to you guys, the customers, and what it means to upgrade to a Band 71 uh, device. Now, of course, I'm not saying Band 12 is bad or anything like that. It still presents coverage, but it's not going to perform as great as what you would potentially get on Band 71. So again, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe. If you have been on the channel for some time, you could go ahead and end the video now. But if you are new to the channel, make sure you like, share, subscribe again. Hit the notification bell so you are notified when I upload content. If you have a Twitter, make sure to follow my Twitter. I will put the videos on there the minute they become available so you guys have access to that as well. Make sure once you hit the Twitter, follow the Twitter. Make sure you push the notifications. Twitter is usually really good about pushing notifications when I put something on, uh, when I tweet something out. YouTube has been dropping the ball on that. So I want you guys to have both both options to make sure you're not late to any of the content. And this is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.